And now we're honored to be joined straight from Los Angeles by the Oscar-winning director Guy Natif to speak about his latest project, The Golda, a film that chronicles the experiences of Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir during the intense 19 days of the 1973 Yom Kippur War. So with renowned actress Helen Mirren leading the film, we're interested to delve into the motivation of bringing the story to life. Guy, thank you so much for making the time for us. How are you feeling these days promoting two films? Is that right? I mean, a lot of playing time. Um, very exhausted, but um, very um, thankful and and honored to do just everything happen at the same time, which is crazy. You don't really get that. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm very, very uh, honored and thankful. That's amazing. Now, how did you decide to direct a film about this story known in really every Israeli household? What was the motivation behind it? Well, it's not it's not really my project uh, per se because Nicholas Martin, the uh, screenwriter, um, started the research like ten years ago. He wanted to do a film about Golda. When I joined the project, uh, it was a massive war film, like a different script. Helen Mirren was attached, uh, but I got very late in the process. Um, there were other directors that competing to direct this film. Uh, but when I got in, it was a very different project, and I really wanted to take it into more of a, you know, claustrophobic, um, I would say, character piece on Golda uh, on those 10 days of the war, rather than just making a war movie that is like super, um, you know, massive kind of a war film that we've seen before. So I really wanted to do it like um, more of a under her skin version. Uh, of Golda, and that's where I really got into this project, and I and I and I kind of uh, had the chance to direct it, and I met with Helen, and we understood that we we're on the same page. So it's it didn't start with me; it started with Nicholas Martin. I was just director for hire. Guy, it's indeed a very personal film. We see mainly her. The war is more in the background. Now, many of the people from back then were 50 years from the Yom Kippur War are not with us anymore. Did it make the research process more difficult, finding people who actually knew Golda? Anything surprising you learned in the process? It is and it was difficult uh, because most people are not alive anymore. But we did have two uh, important people that really helped us getting the you know, the insight of, of Golda uh, um, life back then. One is uh, Maren Medzini, Professor Maren Medzini, who is 91, still alive, um, kind of like he was her press secretary um, back then. And he told us a lot about what went down there and, and about Golda. And the other one was Adam Sneer, her bodyguard, her personal bodyguard that really told me, us, um, what what happened and and the little bits and pieces of Golda, but also don't forget that ten years ago the protocols came out and all the uh, the classified documents uh, revealed so much from the from the war rooms and from from everything. So we use that as a research tool, uh, but we also did our narrative stretches. That you know, it's not a documentary; it's a movie. So we. We brought our own, you know, interpretation about who Golda was. Yes, now Helen Mirren is Golda. Guy, I can tell you, as someone who has watched the movie, amazing. Take us into the brainstorming of casting her, the others. What was it like working with a legend like her? Well, first of all, when I when I got into the project, Helen was already attached. So the, the you know, Gideon Mayer. Uh, Golda's grandson, he thought about Helen uh, first, and he told the production that when he sees Helen, he sees his grandmother, uh, which was fascinating. Um, so when I came on board, they wanted me to meet Helen. I met with her here in my home uh, in Los Angeles, and we bonded uh, over my creative ideas and how I want to see the movie, and she, she was wonderful. And listen, working with her is like, you know, working with the best of the best. She's not only the most intelligent, uh, talented person and one of the best actresses of our time, uh, she's also generous and, and 
such a beautiful person to work with, you know, she, it was just a, a joy to work with someone who's open to ideas. She's, she's so easy to work with and I learned a lot from her. So I'm very lucky. She definitely is a true legend. Now, you also mentioned her grandson. Some biographies from recent years were created without a family's consent. How was the process here in that aspect? Well, you got to be careful because you want to make a movie with a family consent, obviously. You know, they need to give the, their approval. Otherwise, you don't want to make a movie that is like, you know. And you also want to have their not only blessing, but their view on, on, on their grandmother and, and Golda. But also you don't want to make a, a movie coming only to this representing only them. You know, you want to make it harder. On, on, so you don't want to make kind of a propaganda movie about Golda. That's not the goal. It was a, it's a delicate dance. And I think that they did not Told, tell us what to do or what to write or what to direct it. They were not even on set. They didn't come to, to the set. But after that, we did a special screening for them and we got their approval and, and they were a big part of the PR of the movie, uh, representing their mom, their mom or their, grand, their grandmother. Um, so they were really helpful and, and Gideon became a good friend of mine and, you know, he came to the Berlin Berlinale premiere, premiere and he came to Jerusalem Film Festival. He met with Helen. It was very emotional. You know, Guy, it's also courageous today in an era of mostly streaming platforms to bring such a huge, perhaps, you know, Israeli but niche Israeli story to the cinema. Has it crossed your mind? How is the movie really being received on the global stage? What are some of the main uh, comments? Well, it's not an easy movie. Uh, it's not an easy project. I knew that I'm putting myself in a very controversial movie, a uh, character. You know, it's not easy to bring a Zionist narrative to the world. And we did get a slap um, from a lot of people that uh, don't think that Golda represents uh, values of the 2023 era. You know, it's it's a different era, it's a different time. And we all know that Golda was a controversial character, not only in Israel, by the way. She has haters in Israel and she has also um, haters in the world. And especially from the Palestinian uh, side, we see a lot of complaints about the way she uh, approach uh, the Palestinians or the Mizrahis and, you know, the non-Ashkenazi Jews. Um, so we do know it's a controversial character, but the movie concentrate on very, very specific time in our life. So we couldn't like do a vast um, kind of a mini series about her. That's another story. If you want to go deeper into the other aspects, you got to have like an eight episodes movie, but a uh, TV show. But this was more a magnifying glass into the 10 days of the war when Israel was on the, on the verge of, of basically losing themselves and the, the whole debacle of the war. But yes, you're right. It, it, it is a controversial movie. It is a controversial character. I think that I went into a minefield here and, you know, that's what I decided to do. And um, I, I, I cannot win everyone. You know, I cannot win everyone opinion. I know I touched a lot of people's heart, you know, I know a lot of people were very emotional by this movie, especially people from the, that era, from 1973, that fought the war, that were there. I'm getting a lot of response from that, but we're not going to please everyone. And, and that was something we knew, Helen and I knew that we are going into this um, uh, minefield. Definitely, Guy, you definitely cannot please everyone. And in your case, you went into a minefield and, in my opinion, really found gold. So thank you so much for joining us today and good luck.